Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're continuing our exploration of the Boomstar modules, these new Eurorack modules that have been built with some input from Pittsburgh Modular in terms of you know help with design and the way that you get things in the rack. Looked at the oscillation, which is the oscillator. We looked at the 4075, which is the uh, ARP 2600 4072 filter. And today we're going to look at the SEM, which is the classic Oberheim 12 dB two pole filter. Now this filter is, and I quote, it's a voltage controlled state variable filter. Let's take a look at the front panel. We have the frequency up here, uh, the resonance control, uh, the filter tracking, which is full half and off, though this doesn't really go into self oscillation all that, all that far, so you're not gonna be able to play the filter in that way. Uh, frequency C control voltage and the resonance control voltage, because we can, uh, access those separately. Then we've got the mode switch where we're in low pass, high pass mode. This will uh, mix between the two filter types. Then we've got an input stage and an output gain. And this is actually really important because as with the 4075 filter, it allows us to push extra stuff into the filter and drive it. Smash the op amp, as they say, which is all apparently perfectly harmless fun. Uh, but it does allow us to kind of tinker with the overall sound of the filter. So what I have here is a square wave, is a sawtooth wave. I'm just listening to the full low pass mode at the moment, so I'll give it a little sweep. I'm at 50% gain. Take that down a bit. You can hear that there is actually, as I bring the drive up, So now if I start to really bring up the other uh, waves into the wave mixer, we've got this, just pile them all up and bring up the input level. We really are, we're really smashing that now, it's really starting to kind of crunch and make a crazy kind of amount of distortion. Let's go back to a single sawtooth bring up some resonance, halfway, whoops, just need to tune to the oscillator there, you can hear, around about three quarters we start to get that lovely crackly sort of sound, take the drive down, and then full resonance. We get those nice sing song harmonics that you get from a two pole, which I really do like, I must say. Oh, lovely. Right, if we come back to the control here, now what we're going to do is now we listen to the other filter type, so we'll open it wide. Uh, actually, well, before we do that, let's try the drive in there. Uh, really drive it in there with a single waveform and the resonance. This is full resonance, full drive. Take the resonance down a bit. You can hear you get that kind of, it actually seems to smooth out the harmonics. Full resonance. Yeah, we get that kind of clipping sound down here. Anyway, right, let's bring this back up to, I've got a little sequence running. Let's take the resonance down. Now what we're gonna do is listen to the high pass filter. So as we bring this round, we can merge between the two. We get that really interesting, almost phase-like filter separation. Love that. Now if you bring the resonance up, really starts to be pronounced. Yeah, liking that. Bring it right round. Now what I'm going to do is just bring a bit of... Take the drive up. 
modulating this by an LFO. Starting to break up. So quite a variation in filter types. The one thing I did notice though, is this is actually the parameter I'd be most interested in modulating, which is the variation between the low pass and the, ha and the high pass. That would be a nice thing to, uh, to modulate and there doesn't seem to be any way to actually modulate that. Uh, just while we're on the subject of modulating, we should look at the rest of the inputs and outputs. We've got a uh, volt per octave input, so we can scale it over the keyboard. This is the audio input. Uh, this is the frequency CV1, which is controlled by a, a single pot. Then we've got the band pass output, because we can switch between band pass and low pass, high pass. And we've got the resonance uh, CV control, and then finally the output. So let's take a listen to it in uh, band pass mode. Take the resonance down. Let me bring the output up. Bring the resonance up. Again, we get those really lovely sing-song harmonics as we bring the resonance up. that it's definitely got that kind of really juicy character sort of wet crackly kind of feel to it um, so let's patch some other things up and see what else we can get going on right so in this patch I've got the LFO from the Atlantis IntelliGel modulating the cutoff frequency and I've got the ADSR from the uh, dope for a115 mini voice modulating the uh, resonance so let's just play that and see what happens I'm gonna bring in Got a bit of pulse width, and I'm going to bring a sub in there as well. So we've got this kind of additional accenting being taken care of by the ADSR. And as I sweep round to the high pass, Get this beautiful, it's almost like a phaser. Like I say, it would be great to be able to modulate this. I really would like to have been able to do that. So another thing we can do is uh, modulate the cutoff frequency with the CV out. So here, what I've got is the CV coming out of the MIDI notes that are triggering the system. Got a little sequence running with a pulse width wave. You can hear the higher notes in full track mode, the higher notes are opening up. Half, it's half the amount. And then with none, it's all down to this control here. Now it's not possible to play the resonance on this filter because it's a two pole. Although some two poles you can actually uh, create, you know, that they will have enough resonance to be able to self oscillate. Not so with this one. It's also possible to combine filters. So we've got a band pass out here as well as the main output. And I think if you run these two in the same mixer, at least it says in the literature that you can create a notch filter by combining the two. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but it definitely does something to the filter. So if I run this little sequence, Got a little, got a little kind of uh, LFO and ADSR combined modulating the uh, car frequency. And now, if I move this through, take the band pass out. It definitely adds an additional kind of filter styling. Whether that's actually notch, I'm not sure, but it's certainly something different. So you get you get quite a lot of extra different filters. Instantly, that little ping there was just me firing off a resonant filter on the uh, Curtis filter, the Dave Smith here, just triggering it. If I play that, you can see what's going on there. just for your information. So overall, I'd say this has got, a, it's a very different style of filter. And in the same way that the Boomstar desktops all came with a different filter to give you that different filter voice, the SEM has a certain something. And I'm a, I am a sucker for the two pole sound. And uh, again, you know, the only downsides for me is it'd been great to modulate the, free, the, the, the mix between the uh, low pass and the high pass for those really interesting phasey sounds. And uh, again, as with the other ones I've noticed, when you've got pots that are plus and minus, 
the amount of travel either side for very small amounts of modulation is very critical. But for the price, you know, again, it's a premium filter. We're talking uh, 229 UK pounds for uh, the SEM filter. It's the same size, I think it's 12 HP as the 4072, and it's definitely got a very different kind of characteristic to the other one, as with the Boomstars. So if you're looking for that SEM sound, this is definitely gonna be able to provide it to you, but you've got a lot of extra twists with it as well. And the fact that you can really drive that filter hard gives you almost a sort of little distortion unit as well. So that's it, thanks for watching.